Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. With the current spread of the coronavirus, many people keep on asking about the total number of cases and the total number of deaths, how many cases are currently in a country. So I thought I would code a little tracker that would display these numbers. And of course, because we are writing our own code, we can just make it loop every 50 minutes. So we won't have to check the website regularly. A nice little script like this one can be used as a Twitter bot, for example, to display the latest numbers or to display anywhere, somewhere. Anyway, now I, I, I did write this code several days ago and I just had some free time to make this video. So I will be using a cheat sheet, which is why I might skip some steps, then get back to them. And my code progress may not seem quite logical, but that's because I've already wrote this code and I'm working from a piece of paper. Of course, this code will be available on my GitHub and I will link it down in the description. So the website I will use is worldmeter.info and it has a page for the coronavirus. You can see the total number of, of cases and the total number of deaths. And the nice thing is that it has a section on each country and uh, a breakdown of the details. So you can see the total cases per country and the total deaths and recovered and so on. So we can open each of these pages uh, to view the code, uh, which will help us um, to parse uh, each page. Here, I'm just um, going to my desktop and opening a Tmux. I like to use uh, Tmux and Vim to code. It's just easier for me. Uh, we will open a Python script. And we will start by writing the coronavirus uh, function. Um, of course, um, the first thing we will have to do is write the, um, the URL. This is, where, this is going to be for the global cases. So these are global, global cases. We will use the URL, which is worldmeter.info slash coronavirus. That displays the total number of uh, global uh, cases and deaths. So now in order to import the web page, uh, we will use the URL lib uh, library, uh, specifically the request function. And we will write request.url lib for the URL, and then we will read the entire page and of course decode it. I prefer to use beautiful soup. So we will import the uh, beautiful soup for, and from there we will be able to um, extract all the details uh, from the page instead of doing it manually and uh, looping through every single line and um, using regular expressions i find this much easier now in order to find the total number of cases i need to search for that uh, um, particular number and see where exactly in the code in the html code it is And there it is, it's between the title uh, tags. So I will be able to find the title. Or if I, if I look for the title, I will be able to find the values. So let's see what this looks like so far. Now oh, I forgot to <laughs> execute the function. <laughs> there we go. Now having the string, we can just uh, split it to extract the numbers that we are uh, interested in. So conveniently, the, the total number of cases and the total number of deaths are in the same string. So I don't have to write um, more code. I can just extract it from the same list. Yeah, and these are the exact numbers. So sometimes I found that um, the website just prints back an error. And if I just execute the script again, if I query the website again, it works. So maybe later on, I would add a try and accept uh, method. 
And of course, because we're looping through, we want to know exactly when, which time we've accessed the website to know uh, what time these numbers are available. So we'll just print the, uh, the time. The day, the month, the year, and then the hour and the minute. And we don't need seconds because we we will be looping once every 15 minutes. It's not, the, the ticker isn't live at the website. Th sorry, the live ticker at the website doesn't get updated every second. It gets updated roughly every 15 minutes. So we don't really need to bother with seconds. Okay, well, let's now try to look for uh, the details for each country. Most of this will be the same. Um, it's the same website. We will be parsing it, the, uh, so accessing the same way, um, getting the same details more or less. So there's no, re no need to uh, use any different code. Except now we're not looking for a title, we're looking for a table. So the nice thing about this website is that it's not hidden behind a uh, JavaScript or anything. It's just simple HTML. So it makes, makes coding this ticker um, quite easy. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not really good at parsing uh, HTML tables. So this uh, code here, the, the, these uh, three or four lines, I just copied from Stack Overflow. There you go, that is the table. So now it's just a um, case of looping through all the lines of this table and choosing the country and the values that we want. So because the items uh, in this list are either values or empty, uh, it doesn't look good to display empty values. Uh, a, a user may not understand what is an empty value. If, if, if it says, um, for example, um, recovered equals nothing. So I will replace it by a zero. And that's why I have all these if statements. And now to print everything to make sure all the values are working. And there we go, everything is working normally. So we'll now just fix the print statement so we know the meaning of each value. And that's it. That's basically our uh, coronavirus tracker. You can see that it is displaying the time um, of the following values and it shows the global cases, the global deaths and each country's uh, details. The uh, total cases for each country, its deaths, the new cases, the active cases and recovered cases. Now, I do like to add a little bit of what I call embellishments. Um, add colors, add um, a logo, just so it can look nice. Uh, again, it's not really important because this is basically the main function. We've just coded the main function of the tracker, but I like to add some colors to make it look uh, nice on the terminal. 
So I will delete everything because um, I already have written the uh, the uh, the code, and I've um, added the what I call the embellishments. And you can see here that uh, when when we open the tracker, it gives off a nice a nice logo in colors, and uh, each value has its own color. And of course, um, as long as it's open, it will loop every fifteen minutes. So you won't have to check the, uh, the website regularly. So this is how we code a coronavirus tracker. The code will be available in my GitHub. The link will be in the description. Of course, you are more than welcome to use this tracker anywhere. And if you find that you can add something useful, you are more than welcome to contribute to the GitHub repository. I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.